So, it turns out creating music is extremely difficult. You've got writing music, recording, producing, marketing, promoting, consuming. You've got consuming all the channels that get you to the writing, recording, promoting, producing. It, it's, there's a lot of skill and talent required. I have a newfound respect for all those talented individuals who get those variables correct and in line in order to get to the end goal of producing. I'm blown away. There is a lot, there's tons to do. I've just spent the last couple of weeks trying to do that exact thing myself, trying to record just a single song. It is extremely difficult. I'm hitting some serious brick walls. It's very difficult I'm trying to hold my tongue there. Now, I'm still in the belief that music should be free. Music should be free to consume and create. The creation bit is a huge dynamic. It's a big area to make free. I think I have an idea of how that can work. Blockchain, blockchain technology. Blockchain is going to be the saving grace in this area. It's, it's gonna be the thing that allows people to create and deliver that content to the consumer for free. Nothing's free, obviously. There's always a cost involved, but it's going to be practically free. Trust me on this one. Famous last words. So remember, our mission here is to create music, maximize the availability of those creation tools and have that creation content delivered to the consumer all seamlessly. And as I said, blockchain technology. Now, this is where blockchain technology comes in. Let's look at the old way things used to work, where you have an orchestrator, a governing body that controls the dynamics of these variables. It's a, it's a single entity, organization, individual that has the controlling power or significant influence in the, the dynamics of how the creation of content to delivery of content slash consumption is coordinated. So you have a set of users in the old system, current system. You have, there's a spider. You have a set of users and these users are just a set of profiles. They can create content and they can consume it. Where an individual chooses to be a creator, they create content. So that content goes into a database. And this database of content is now sitting there ready for access by the consumer profile. You think it's as simple as that. What happens is there's an entire array of algorithms and protocols that funnels the content to the consumer. So you think as a consumer, you are choosing what you wanna watch? Think again, that algorithm is aligning the variables in such a way that you are very likely to click on an item for your consumption and pleasure. That's how the current system works whether you like it or not. In fact, I'm pretty positive this video is not going to reach you on this platform. Think about it. Anyway, that's where blockchain technology comes in. Watch the space. Back to the old system or the current system that we need to evolve. You've got the consumer thinking that he's digging into the content that he wishes to see. We know that that's not true. So. What do you think that the creator is going to aim to create? Take a moment, hit pause to think. You back? Right, he is going to aim for the items that are being consumed. What is being consumed? The items that is being funneled into consumption. So the creator is going to chase the algorithm this protocol determined by the controller and the consumer now consumes a very, very, not only funneled, but now limited number of items. 
The creator's not free to create content. He is funneled into creating content and that content is being funneled into the consumer. That's the current environment. Now, let's think about a decentralized blockchain system where the consumer gets to choose his own algorithm. He gets to define the protocols and the algorithms that determine the content that he consumes freely, where he is not influenced by a predetermined set of variables orchestrated by the Supremes. He is now free to choose the content that's available. The creator now has an environment where he's not chasing an algorithm. So he is more likely to create a much wider array of content. Positive feedback loop there. So what happens there is positive feedback loop. You've got a situation where the consumer is now free to consume the content that he wishes to consume. And the creator now no longer needs to chase an algorithm. So he is creating whatever he wishes to. It's not funneled into a select few variables. Win-win. Let's talk about the reward system, the cost. Cost and reward. You've got someone who wants to consume and there's a cost involved in that. The opposite side of that cost is the reward, the reward for the creator. Consumer cost, creator reward. In the old system, you've got the orchestrator that sits above and coordinates what flows. What happens there is there's a marketer and he wants to be the middleman. There's two ways that the orchestrator will control the flow of cost to reward. First way is subscription, paid for subscription. You've got the consumer, he's paid for subscription to use the orchestrator services and he can now freely consume content. And every single time he clicks on a content item, the creator gets rewarded. Who controls the flow of this information? The orchestrator. Are you able to tell the number of views or the, the number of times your item has been consumed? You think? Yes, the truth is I'm sure it's accurate. I don't think it would be in the orchestrator's favor to get those numbers wrong. But your trust is still entirely in their hands. They control the calculation of these figures. You as a creator are completely reliant on the orchestrator's calculation methods or the, the payment methods. You, you, you're reliant on how they wish to reward you. you you choose to create on this platform and you are at their mercy. Subscription, done. The second way of cost to reward is you get another player, a marketer or an advertiser. He comes down and he says, I'll tell you what, Mr. Orchestrator, for a moment of your consumer's time, I would like to promote something so that the item that I'm trying to sell will make me money. I will pay you for a little moment of that consumer's time. The consumer is bombarded with an advert. And to be honest, I've got nothing against that system. I think that there's actually, um, there's, there's a potential future here and I'll, I'll get into that possibly in another video. The consumer is bombarded with a snippet of an advert, 10 seconds, 20 seconds, whatever it is. And the marketer or the advertiser will pay for that little moment. So what happens here? The consumer has lost a bit of time and the marketer has paid for that time. The marketer has paid the orchestrator for the consumer's moment. Orchestrator then also pays the creator and rewards the creator for creating a moment worthy of waiting for that content. There's a huge flow that goes around all orchestrated and controlled by the orchestrator. The marketer wins by gaining a moment. The consumer has indirectly paid for it via time. The orchestrator has reaped the reward of the marketer's payment and the creator reaps the reward of that moment via a payment from the orchestrator. Not a bad system, works pretty well. In fact, it's actually quite profitable. The only thing is that it's a bit, 
it's a bit redundant and it's a bit bulky and slow and not in your control, not in the creator's control and not in the consumer's control. How about an environment, blockchain, where the consumer can choose himself directly whether he wishes to pay for a subscription directly to the creator or he chooses to watch an advert for a moment of his time he gets paid directly by the marketer no orchestrator the content producer the creator will also get rewarded for having a moment involved in that situation this is the beauty of the situation the creator gets paid either directly by the consumer or directly by the marketer. He gets to be in control of the type of adverts that are on his channel, the number of adverts on his channel. Yes, I guess I get there is a level of, of control as well in the current situation, but imagine having full control. But get this, this is the best bit. The consumer gets to choose the type of adverts coming their way. So at the moment, you don't get to choose. You, you get advertised upon by your variables that this orchestrator has. You are a male. You are 55. You are going bald. How do they know that? I don't know. I don't know how they know you're going bald, but they know you're going bald and they are shoving Bold products down your face, down your head, shoving cream on your head, and you're consuming it. But now, imagine saying, do you know what? I can't pay for all my subscriptions. The consumer can't afford to pay for each subscription that he wishes to subscribe to. What he does instead is he says, I'll pay a select few and I'll have to be advertised upon for the rest. But this is where the best bit is. He gets to choose what adverts come his way. He gets to say, you know what? I'm not interested in shaving cream for my bald head. I'm not interested in that. Or I am particularly interested in shaving cream for my bald head. And that's the content I want to know about the best deals on those products. Or do you know what? Just because I'm a 45 year old middle aged man does not mean I'm going to be interested in fast cars. No, I'm going to be interested in walking. So I want trainers. Promote trainers to me. That's what I'm interested in. Give me a good deal. Show me what's out there. Yes, I'm interested. I want to choose what I see as an advert. I don't disagree with advertising. I think it's actually a good thing. I think it's also a good thing. If you have control of your information and you give your information to the advertisers you want to advertise to you, that's the power of the situation. You gain control of your situation. You, you are the controller. You are your own orchestrator. Bring on blockchain technology. I am seriously rooting for all the major projects out there. I cannot wait until we live in a world where there is self-control. You have the power of what you consume and what you consume in terms of advertising. I didn't even realize it. There's double consumption there. You think you're consuming the thing that you want to consume? No, the orchestrator funnels what you think you want to consume. He gets to choose or she gets to choose what you see. That's the part that you think you have control of. What about the part that you don't have control of? The advertising. Imagine having control of the advertising coming your way. Oh, come on, bring it on. Now, this is where blockchain. Now, this is where blockchain. Now, now, there's two ways that the orchestrator controls the flow of cost to reward. He's are they going to charge a subscription fee? No hassle, direct content, go for it, consume. 